All right, buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, so I got some great comments here. You know, I wanted to um, respond or reply to this comment right here, and it's interesting because uh, as I was typing it out, I went did this, scroll down a little bit, and then. I saw that and that my comment was like right there I scrolled back up and this was gone it doesn't matter it's weird I don't know what it, it's probably my computer but it's just weird but who cares all right so this is a great comment right here and before I get into it because I'm really gonna really gonna get into it all right I want to address this one here by Roderick 1983 he says iron sharpening iron is often misused to apply to two in battle this dulls iron now <clears throat> excuse me now if you take your iron to the solid rock to be sharpened that iron can sharpen your iron same as sharpening knives it's done on a solid stable source that source is Jesus Jesus is the only iron that sharpens. P.S. Sean, revealing truth, is an okay fella. He's once saved, always saved, and even has many vids exposing fakers. Now, that's great, okay, because that's where the starting point is. Yeah, If you don't know, or if I'm, maybe I should say it like, if you don't believe you are eternally saved then you're not saved at all and uh, you know it's that lack of faith is going to cause you not to be able to understand the Word of God and so why would this gentleman who is saved assuming so why is it that he cannot see the simple scripture that is written and <clears throat> again this is you know the same point that I've been bringing up over and over and over again if you don't believe the Bible that you hold in your hands you're not gonna be able to understand it and as I demonstrated <clears throat> excuse me as I demonstrated in that video I apologize he doesn't believe the Bible that he holds on his hand. I believe he was quoting the NASB. And so, if you really are saved, why do you not believe the Bible that you hold in your hands? Well, it to me it's obvious. It's because you listen to what other men said. No question about it. You believed what men said about the Word of God rather than trusting God. It's so simple. It really is. But also at the same time, I understand there's a process that we go through that, you know, we grow and we learn and... Uh, you know the the mystery of God is revealed to us but it's always revealed through faith and if you don't have faith you're not going to be able to see it alright so what was that what was that uh, oh I don't remember I was just looking at a verse here Oh, I don't remember. I don't remember. Was it? Was it? Uh, excuse me. Was it uh, Revelation 22? Maybe. I don't remember. I don't remember nothing. Let me see. Let me see if I can find it. Oh, goodness sakes. What was it about? 
the verse that I wanted to share. What was that verse? Isaiah, where was I just at? There it is, okay, all right, now, oh, wow. All right, so, Isaiah 66. And it says, I, if you read that very first verse, the, thus saith the Lord, the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Think about that. Of all the things that I've been preaching uh, regarding Revelation 20, the throne is my footstool. Heaven is my throne. At the end of the world, God sends fire down from heaven, excuse me, and devours them that are not saved. God is in heaven, and the unsaved will be on the earth, and the camp of the saints will be where? 1948 Israel? No. Up in heaven. All right. We are with God, even now. But when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, we are up in the air with the Lord. Right? And this is very simple. Jerusalem, which is above, is free, and the mother of us all. <clears throat> Alright, so Jerusalem is above. <laughs> this is so simple. Really. It really is. Jerusalem is above. Right? And so where's the beloved city? Where's the camp of the saints? And the beloved city? You can't figure that out, man. Why? Why can't you figure it out? Well, the reason why people like uh Sean can't figure this out is because they don't trust the Bible. They trust what other men say. And so again, Isaiah 66, I also will choose their delusions and will bring their fears upon them because when I called, none did answer. When I spake, they did not hear, but they did evil. They teach evil, evil things. And this is a very evil thing to teach this idea of a bonus thousand years where you've got immortals living among mortals. You have Jesus coming back and people still having sex after Jesus comes back, which is totally contrary to the word of God. It's un believable and extremely offensive to teach such wickedness it's not Christianity it's a whole another thing separate from God I, I show that time and time again now hear the word of the Lord ye that tremble at his word your brethren that hated you that cast you out for my name's sake said let the Lord be glorified but he shall Appear to your joy and they shall be ashamed all right so again this goes on to um, uh, make this prophecy if you will that uh, a nation shall be born at once when the man-child is delivered into the world this is in other words when God is manifest in the flesh then we which are Christ are now the nation of God we are the people of God all right so make no mistake about that all right so that's a little bit longer than what I wanted to but um, so again Roderick I appreciate the comment and uh, you know that's a that's a great uh, a point that you make about iron but these people 
that are teaching the strange doctrines of the end of the world. You gotta watch out for them. Don't take their word for it. What does the Bible say? And again, it's about faith in the Word of God. It's act, it's about actually believing the Bible that you hold in your hands. Okay. Man, it drives me nuts, man. It drives me nuts. You see these people, they'll quote it. They'll read it. They'll quote it. And they still don't understand it because they don't believe it. Okay. So anyways, let's move on. Um, GG272. Can I ask where you see the contradiction if what he said is correct? Is this, is it this passage? And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. Alright, so that's a great, that's a great uh, passage in the Bible. So let's walk through this. Alright. <clears throat> All right, so let me, where are we at here? All right there, okay. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. All right, so it's important, I think, to, um, you know, sort of understand what the definition of tabernacle is, and of course, we see ten, uh, ten, temporary habitation among the Jews, a movable building, a place of worship, a sacred place, our natural body, God's gracious presence, or the tokens of it. <laughs> and I forget this Roman Catholic. That doesn't mean nothing. It's like, well, this is what the devil says it is, okay? Now, I want to go over these mentions here. Let's go Psalm 15, okay? Who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? All right, so it's important here, I, I think, <laughs> that you understand that this tabernacle is representative of our glorified bodies. This holy hill is representative of our, of our holy city, the city of God, which is in heaven, which will come down from heaven at the end of the world when there's new heavens and a new earth. All right? And then uh, let's go to Second Corinthians 5. I have that yeah. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon that mortality might be swallowed up of life. All right, so let's see. Go up here. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God. And house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. All right, so again, um, this tabernacle is representative of the tabernacle or of our glorified bodies. Okay, it's a uh, it's uh, temporary, whereas our glorified bodies will be eternal. Now keep that in mind. I got more here. All right, Second Peter one. All right. Okay. Yeah, I think it me as long as I am in this tabernacle to stir you up by putting you in remembrance, knowing that shortly I must put off this, my tabernacle, even as the Lord Jesus Christ has showed me. All right. So this tabernacle that we're in now, 
we will take it off and we will put on the heavenly tabernacle which is our glorified body okay uh, and then so let's see let's go back to Revelation 21 and I heard a great voice out of heaven saying behold the tabernacle of God is with men all right so here we have Jesus Christ let's go to Daniel's Daniel chapter 9 all right it's humble. This is n another one of those things that people teach that have no understanding whatsoever because they don't trust what the Bible says. They only trust what men say. And it's insane. It's insanity. Consider the vision. Alright, 70 weeks are determined to make an end of sins. Alright, and then, the, then, so shall, then shall the Messiah be cut off. Okay, he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice in oblation to cease because he laid down his life as the perfect sacrifice to God for the, our sins, and not ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. You got to be out of your cotton picking mind to teach that the Antichrist is going to make an end of sins it's retardation it really is because nowhere in, in Daniel 9 nowhere in the Bible is that ever suggested but there's a good majority of preachers preaching that because they found a sermon online that's what the sermon online says to hell with what the Bible says. That's what the sermon online says. Now, I'm not kidding you. That's what they do. They do not trust the Bible. They trust what the experts and scholars say that the Bible says. Just like what we read about in Genesis 3. Now, consider. <laughs> consider the vision. Alright, let's consider it. Alright, so... The commandment to restore and rebuild, right, and to build, excuse me, to restore and build Jerusalem unto the Messiah. Now, this is the prophecy that is everybody talks about when they refer to the third temple being built. All right, so. First of all, there's nothing in the Bible at all that suggests a third temple is going to be built. This prophecy is about Jesus Christ laying down his life. And you should have known that. You should have known that because of everything that's written in the New Testament makes it very clear. In John chapter 2, verse 21, but he spake of the temple of his body. Do you know what that's referring to? Jesus said, Tear down this temple, and in three days I will build it, I will raise it up. And then the, the blind Jews who could not understand because they did not believe the scripture, they did not have faith, they they knew the scripture, but they didn't believe it. Just what we see today. Then said the Jews, Forty and six years was this temple and building, and wilt thou rear it up in three days? They lacked understanding because they lack faith. And that's happening today. It's unbelievable. <clears throat> there is no third temple being built. Jesus rebuilt the temple when he resurrected from the dead. That rebuilt temple is what we that are born of God put our hope into. Okay? It's not we're not putting our hope into a third temple. Jesus has rebuilt the temple 
All right, so when we read about the tabernacle, the tabernacle of God is with men. This is when we are changed, transformed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. This is that moment. All right, that's eternal life. That's what we put our hope into. We're, it, we're not putting our hope in anything else. As this Sean guy teaches, he's putting his hope into a thousand years. That's not eternal life. What good is a bonus thousand years going to get you? Well, you think it's an extra thousand years to have sex? Is that what you're putting your hope into? I've shown you the videos of people being honest and saying, hey, we're going to be having sex just like we did when we were 20 years old. It's a thing. It's just not everybody's honest about it. You know, be, so I don't know what's in somebody's head. Be interesting if they were just that, you know, just that low IQ didn't know that they were being deceived in that sort of way. But this is, again, goes back to Isaiah 66. I will choose their delusions. Why would these men teach a bonus thousand years? If it was not because they secretly desire to have their youthful uh, their you know their youthful bodies uh, returned to them and uh, so that they can have you know dirty stinky sex I uh, really I right, think about this what what verse was that? Genesis 8, verse 21. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Alright. Now, is there another verse? I am not sure. That's the one I, that's the one I wanted to show you. Alright. A man's heart is evil from his his youth. Second Timothy chapter two verse twenty two flee also youthful lust. So why are you teaching this idea that people are having sex after Jesus returns? And why why teach that unless you think you're also gonna be having sex? <laughs> so when you boil it all down, man, it's that's what you're teaching. You're teaching bad things. It's bad. I mean, that's terrible. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world... Oh. And the world passes away in the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Alright. The world passes away in the lust thereof. So why... Are you teaching this idea that mortals are going to be living among immortals after Jesus returns? Right. In the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given a marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. Now, are you teaching that, hey, people aren't going to be married, but they're still going to be having sex? Is that what you're teaching? The resurrection is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. 
I don't know how you miss it, man. I don't know how you miss it. I really don't. Because this this is supported all throughout the Bible. It's unbelievable. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment and twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be resurrected, raised, incorruptible. And we shall be changed, for this corruptible must put on incorruption. This mortal must put on immortality. Then shall be brought the pass, the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. So you can't have more death after Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. And so what these people like Sean teach is that they're going to be having sex and they're going to be people dying after Jesus returns. Contrary to everything that we're reading in the Bible. It's unbelievable. It really is. Alright, so... Um, GG, I'm not sure exactly uh, what you're referring to. Uh, you know, the, the, con the contradiction is enormous. There's many of them. Just every single thing in relation to Revelation 20. Um, so, give me another example. Let's go, let's do it this way. Let's parallel uh, the N the NASB. All right. Well, we could parallel this one too because it, they mirror each other. All right. They they came to life like zombies. It's, it's insanity. Let me show you. At some point, I hope somebody sees it, man. This is unbelievable. Honestly, I feel like I'm going through this process that I went through 10 years ago where nobody, it seems like nobody's listening. It really does feel that way. Alright, so here, the NS, <clears throat> excuse me. The NASB on the right and the Bible on the left, okay? Now you see here in verse 4, it says... Oh, I thought, where were we at here? Oh, they came to life like zombies. Zombies, they came to life. They had their... Look at this. They were beheaded and they came to life. It's the zombie doctrine, man. It, it's not true. But, if what they are teaching is true, then those people with no heads, they come back to life? Come on, man. You're not seeing it? This is a zombie doctrine. Headless people walking around for a thousand years. What's the matter with y'all? Here, over here, I saw the souls of them that were beheaded, that had not worshipped the beast. These people that are Christ, that are born of God, they live they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. That's talking about the time period that we're living in now. There are people that are being persecuted. We that are born of God are persecuted. And I, I, my concern is that people don't realize how much we suffer because they're waiting for Dan Rather to come on TV and tell them their, their pains, you know. Until Dan Rather says, hey, you're a Christian and, and you're being persecuted, people aren't going to believe it. 
they're not going to see it. They're not going to know it. They're not going to understand it, even though the Word of God makes it crystal clear. Okay, so they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. They lived and reigned with Christ. Notice here, it's not saying Jesus reigns a thousand years. Right? It says they lived and reigned with Christ. Huge difference. Who's reigning for a thousand years? Well, it doesn't say Christ reigns a thousand years. It says they, they. In other words, they that are being beheaded, being a witness for Jesus, being those that didn't worship the politicians. They, that's us. We live and reign with Christ right now. If you are not reigning with Christ right now, then you're not saved by your own words. And that was another point that I was making in the video. It has made us kings and priests unto God, right? Let's see, what was I looking for here? Um, what was I looking for? That he lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years, but the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years are finished. This is the first resurrection. Who's the first resurrection? It's Jesus. Are you not a partaker of his resurrection? Huh? Think about that. You want to be a partaker of this resurrection where you got people walking around without a head for a thousand years so, and they came there it is, they came to life they came to life these zombies with no head that's the resurrection you want to be a part of I mean you go back to Isaiah 66 I will choose their delusions. Uh, are we not witnessing this? More so ever than before. More so than ever before in the history of the world. This world has not never seen so many people and so many delusions and so many lies, so much deception as what we're seeing in the world today. Hey, this goes beyond just being an atheist, <laughs> right? This is disguising themselves as people of God. They're people of God claiming to read the Bible and teach these false things. It's unbelievable. People beheaded, coming back to life. Is that the first resurrection? No. Jesus is the first resurrection. And he, <laughs> he says, I show this every single time. It's unbelievable. I could show it. Every single time I could leave it on the screen, and I still don't think people will see it. Because they don't want to believe what is written in the Word of God. It's unbelievable. Jesus said in her, I am the resurrection. Alright. So, who is the resurrection? 
Is it these people with no head? Right? The beheaded? The zombies? Is that the first resurrection? No, it's not. I, I don't know how you don't see it.